Morning guys, only four more days of working at home and then you will be back at school with your friends and Miss Presley. Okay, we're gonna go straight into Read Write Inc this morning. Okay, and we've got a new story. Okay, so our story is called Sam Gets a Shock. This rhyming ditty is about a boy who gets a shock when he goes fishing. We are going to start with our ditty green words. Okay, so we're going to read the separate sounds and then blend the sounds together and say the word. Okay, I'm going to do the first one with you. Okay, I, n, I, n, in. And if, if you have a look further down, there are special friends that you need to be looking for. So the two letters underlined are your special friends. So when you go through them, say, yeah, I can see special friends. Then you can say your separate sounds and then blend them together. So pause the video here and can you say your ditty green words? Well done. Now we're going to read the root word and then the whole word with the ending. Okay, I will do the first one. D, I, P. D, I, P. S, D, I, P. Dip. D, I, P. S. Dips. Pause the video. Can you read dip and dips and onto your next two? Well done. Onto our ditty red word. There's only one ditty red word today and it is. Well done if you said he. He. Okay, I'm not going to miss out our nonsense words today and then have to go back. So we've got them here. We have got four nonsense words. Okay, I will read the first one, sound out the first one with you. And then you can pause the video and do the rest yourself. Fought. Fought. Pause the video. Can you read the other three? Well done. Okay. We are going to start our story. Sam gets a shock. Okay. Oh, I wonder why he gets a shock. Let's read it. Okay. Okay. Sam dips in his net and gets a sock. sock. <gasps> Can you read the next two pages for me? Pause the video here. Okay, focusing on those red words. Good reading. Now, can you read along with me? He dips in his net and gets a rock. He dips in his net and gets a shock. Nip, nip, nip. Well done. Okay, I have two questions for you now. Okay, my first question is, what is the first thing that Sam finds? What is the first thing that Sam finds? Pause the video. Can you answer the question? If you can, write the answer down as well. Well done if you said a sock. Sam catches a sock first. Okay, second question. Why does Sam get a shock? Why does Sam get a shock? Pause the video. Can you answer that question? Can you write it down? Well done if you said Sam gets a shock because he catches a crab and it goes nip, nip, nip. Well done, guys. Great reading. Okay, guys, we're going to do our holder sentence. Okay, here is our holding a sentence for today. He dips in his net and gets a blank. Okay, he dips in his net and gets a. Okay, so remember the story and think about what he gets when he dips in his net. Okay, there are more than one answer for this. Okay, so first remember your capital letters, your finger spaces, your full stop, and then try and fill in the missing word. Okay, last look. Okay, let's mark our sentence together. He, capital letter, dips in his net, finger spaces, and gets a, okay, you could write, or oh, special friends, he dips in his net and gets a 
sock. He dips in his net and gets a oh, special friend. He dips in his net and gets a rock. Rock, sock. Okay, if you got rock or sock, tick. Okay, and full stop. Okay, so far we've got one, two, three, four ticks for our sentence. Okay, he dips in his net and gets a shh, special friends. Oh, special friends. Now that's a hard one. If you got that, I'd be super impressed. He dips in his net and gets a shock. Shock. Sh oh, two lots of special friends in that one. Superstar. Two ticks. If that's the one that you chose, well done. If we extended our sentence, okay, fantastic. You could always go back now over your sentence and try extend it. He dips in his net and gets a shock because he catches a big red crab. What a great sentence. He dips in his net and gets a shock because he catches a big red crab. Well done guys and keep practicing your writing. Right guys, so today in English, we're going to focus on our story, Jack and the Beanstalk again. Okay, yesterday we talked about our characters and our settings. And we said what happened first, next, and then finally. Okay, today we're going to read through our story. Okay, and then we are going to sequence what happens. Okay, so sequencing means putting things in the right order so that they make sense. So like we did a little bit yesterday, first, next, and finally, Okay, we're going to be doing that. We're going to order some sentences and some pictures so our story makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to read the story for you again, just so we remember. Okay, so listen really carefully because you're going to have to order the story yourself soon. Jack and the Beanstalk. Once upon a time, there was a boy called Jack. Jack lived in a cottage with his mother. They were very poor and their most valuable possession was a cow. One day, Jack's mother asked him to take the cow to market to sell. On the way, Jack met a man who gave him some magic beans in exchange for the cow. When Jack came home with the beans, his mother was angry. She threw those beans out of the window and sent him to bed. The next morning, Jack looked out of the window and saw a giant beanstalk had grown in the garden. Jack decided to climb the beanstalk. It was so tall, it went right up to the sky and through the clouds. When Jack finally reached the top, he saw an enormous castle. Jack decided to go inside. All the furniture was huge. Suddenly, Jack heard a loud noise. He ran into the cupboard to hide. An enormous giant came into the room. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman, he bellowed. The giant sat down on the table and on the table was a hen and a golden harp. Lay, said the giant. And the hen laid an egg. It was made of solid gold. Sing, said the giant. And the harp sang and the giant fell asleep. Jack jumped out of the cupboard and he took the hen and he took the harp. And the, as Jack ran, the harp cried, help master, help. The giant woke up and he called, fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. He chased Jack to the top of the beanstalk and Jack climbed down the beanstalk and the giant followed him. As Jack got to the bottom of the beanstalk, he shouted, help. Jack's mother came with an ax and she used it to chop the bottom of the beanstalk. Chop, chop, chop. The giant fell and he crashed to the ground. He was never seen again. With the golden eggs and the magic harp, Jack and his mother lived happily ever after. 
our activity today in English, okay, is sequencing. So we have to sequence the correct order that the story was in, okay? So what we have got, we've got some sentences, which are, everything will be posted on Dojo, okay? If you would like, you can cut this out, you can print it out, sorry, and then you can cut them out and then you can match the pictures to the sentences in the right order. Or I would really like it if you could write them out practicing your really neat handwriting. Okay, so make sure they are sequenced in the correct order. So when you are reading and you might need some help with, some, with an adult, so think about what happens first in the story. Okay, what happens first in the story? Okay. So first in the story, Jack sells his cow for some magic beans. Okay, so that is our first sentence. Let's have a look if we can find that on our sheet. Here we go. Jack sells his cow for some magic beans. Okay, that is our first sentence. Jack sells his cow for some magic beans. That sentence matches that picture up there, doesn't it? So this one up here. So remember, if we are cutting out and we are sticking in the correct order, then our pictures need to match our um, sentences. Because if you have a look at the one next to, Jack sells his cow for some magic beans. That's the castle, isn't it? So they don't match. So our first task is to sequence, okay? So order them correctly, what happens first and go through the story. Okay, then I want you to match the pictures. If you are doing it in your book, you could draw a picture next to, so you could say Jack sells his cow for some magic beans. You could draw a picture of Jack and his cow and the man that sells him for magic beans. Okay, I can't wait to see what you come up with and your fantastic writing of your sentences. Well done, guys. Hi, guys. So this is our year one maths. Um, we're going to go straight into it and see what we're le learning about today. Okay, so first we're going to have a look at what our little turtle says down here about this castle. Okay, so our turtle is saying the castle is five shells long. So I want you to pause the video here and tell me if you think he's correct or he's incorrect. And then can you have a think about why? Why do you think he is correct or incorrect? Okay, so just pause the video. Right, okay. Well done if you said he is not correct. And shall we find out why? Well done if you said he was incorrect because the shells have to be the same size. If you are measuring a castle and you are measuring this castle in shells, then all the shells have to be the same size. Okay. Have a look at this one. Our little friend the turtle is saying the castle is five blocks long. Can you have a look? The castle is five blocks long. Do you think the turtle is correct or incorrect? And can you have a think about why? So just pause the video here. Well done if you said he is incorrect. Okay, you can't leave spaces between the blocks. So if you have a look, he's left spaces between some and then put some together. Even though they're all the same size this time, they have to be together, okay? So if he put them all together and there were five, then it would be, but he is incorrect this time. Okay. Have a look at this one. The giraffe is four suitcases tall. The giraffe is four suitcases tall. What do you think? Do you think he is four suitcases tall? Let's count. One, two, three, four. Is it the same? Yes, the giraffe is four suitcases tall. All the suitcases are the same size, okay? And they're all together and they are lined up with the giraffe. So when you go across from the suitcases to the giraffe, they are the same level. So that's how we know the giraffe is four suitcases tall, okay? If you have paper clips around the house, okay? That would be amazing for this. We are going to measure different things around the house 
Okay, so if you have a look at this one, the spoon is how many paper clips long? Okay, so you can see on the screen, this spoon is one, two, three, four, five paper clips, clips long. Okay, if you have a spoon at home and you have some paper clips, or if you have some little blocks, okay, or a number of things that are all exactly the same that you could measure, you can measure different things around your house. So we've got a spoon. You can also use blocks to measure your spoon. And to make it extra tricky, not only you could measure with blocks, but you could also say some, uh, the spoon is shorter than a certain amount of blocks. So if you line up 10 blocks and then you put the spoon next to 10 blocks, can you say the spoon is shorter than these 10 blocks by how many blocks? Okay, guys, so there's not an actual worksheet um, for year ones today um, with White Rose Maths. So I want you to be practical, okay? I would like you to measure different things like we saw in the video, maybe spoons and um, different things around the house with either blocks or paper clips or just whatever you can get your hands on. Or speaking of hands, you can also measure people using hands. So you could stand up next to mummy or daddy or whoever you live with and you could say, start from the floor and measure up and go one, two, three, four, and count until you get to the top, okay? Horses are actually measured in hands. So if you ever ask an owner of a horse how many hands their horses are, that's how they measure them, okay? So we use like rulers or, or a tape measure, but when you measure a horse, you use hands. So if we get used to using our hands to measure, then maybe one day, if we ever get to come in close contact with a horse, we can measure how many hands tall, okay? Take pictures if you can. Um, and if you're really struggling with um, things that you could, that you need to measure, then you can just give me a call at school and I can leave some blocks or some paper clips outside for you to collect. Um, just let me know, see how you get on. Um, and I can't wait to see what you come up with. Hi guys, so this is our year two maths. Let's see what we've got on our worksheets today. Okay, so year two, we're going to be doing lines of symmetry and we are going to be drawing the whole shape, okay? So if you've got maths books at home with squares, it is really important that you are following this exactly, okay? Because the whole point of it is symmetrical, symmetry, and it has to be exactly the same. So if you have maths books at home and they have the squares, then this needs to be done correctly, okay? If you don't and you're doing it on paper or you are doing it on here, that's fine because on here there's squares. If you're doing it on paper at home, uh, lined paper, that's all right. You might be able to ask an adult to help you draw some squares. It's just really important in this one that when we're drawing the whole shape that we're using the squares to make sure it's symmetrical, so exactly the same on each side. Okay, so let's start on question one. Okay, complete each shape. Okay, so each diagram shows half of the shape and the line of symmetry. So that red dotted line down the middle is the middle of the shape, and that's called the line of symmetry. Okay, because each side, each side on each side of that line is exactly symmetrical. So if we have a look, we have to draw that shape, the other half of that shape exactly on this side. So we need to have a look. The top line here goes across two squares. So we need to go one, two squares. Then we need to count down one, two, three, four, five. So then we need to go down five squares. One, two, three, four, five squares. And then back across two. Okay, so you can see how important it is um, having those squares because you can count how many squares across and how many squares down and that makes it symmetrical. Okay, so. Okay, guys, um, I want to take you on to question five. This is going to be really tricky if we're doing it on a computer. 
Um, I know a lot of you do it on a computer. So all I'm going to say is just try your best. Can't remember to count the squares across. Okay. And um, just try your best. I know it's really hard. Um, so drawing. So you can see there's that much square that they have gone over to do. So you have to use that line of symmetry. Okay. To draw exactly the same on both sides. Like I said, I know it's going to be very tricky on a computer. Already mine's not symmetrical. Um, I'm trying to do it on the computer. Um, it's really important that you count the squares. Don't just do this. Okay, so I'm going to have a go at drawing for you. It's really important that you use the squares so it's symmetrical. Don't just do this. So, and then draw a chimney and then just draw some windows and just be like, yeah, I've done it, I've done it. Because it's not, although it might look still like a house to you, it's not symmetrical because it has to be exactly the same on each side. So you need to count along, count how many squares, then you need to mirror, okay, and make it symmetrical on the other side, count how many squares. Like I said, it's gonna be very tricky on the computer, um, but try your best. If you've got a lined paper at home, um, it'll be a little easier for you. If you've got um, square paper at home, then perfect. You'll be able to do this and it'll be exactly symmetrical, okay? If you need any graph paper, so paper with squares on, and you really want to do, and you really want to do this activity, but you don't have access to that, then just give me a call and you can come into school and you can collect some squared paper if you don't have any at home, okay? Can't wait to see how you get on, guys. Hi guys, so this afternoon, we've got our next lesson in our puppets. Okay, so last week, we researched puppets, we researched what they were, um, what they were used for, um, and why we use them. So this week, we are going to design our own puppets. So we're going to have a look back over the puppets that we looked at and design our own. So if you have a look on my screen now, you can see I've got four different types of puppets here. You've got the finger puppets, the ones that go on the ends of your fingers. Then you've got the string puppets, so the ones that you pull, so you move the parts of the body, just like Pinocchio. Then you've got your sock puppet. And then you've also got a shadow puppet. So they're very interesting ones. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we are going to design our own, and it can be any of those, okay? You, it could, we're going to design our own puppets. It can be any of those because there are lots of different types of puppets, okay? But you are designing your own, whether it be a finger puppet, a shadow puppet, a sock puppet, a string puppet, okay? I'm going to show you the template that we can use, okay? Just like we've done before, okay, when designing different things, we're going to use this design sheet. So this design sheet will be on Dojo, okay? And you can draw your design for your puppet, okay? The lines help you make it to scale, so make it the right size. So if you're drawing a finger puppet, it's not gonna take up the whole page unless you've got a really big finger, okay? So I'm on a computer, so I know it's gonna be difficult for me to try and draw, but if you print it out or do it in your books, um, you can do it to scale and you can do it a little bit neater. But if you were to draw a finger puppet, you could draw maybe your finger first, then you could draw some eyes, depending on what your puppet wants to be. Mine's starting to look like a frog, so it could be a frog. You could draw your smile here and his nose. That could be something like a finger puppet. If you want to draw a sock puppet, Okay, you could then design your sock puppet on here. So sock puppet will be a little bit bigger and the things will be on the sock puppet. So you've got your eyes. You could do a nose and a mouth and you can put ears on it if you want. Um, there are lots of different designs. If you were doing a shadow puppet, you'd only need the silhouettes. You just need the outline. Okay, because when you put the puppet behind the screen, all you can see is the silhouette, so the outline of the shape, okay? So enjoy designing your own puppet and I can't wait to see what ideas you come up with.
Right, guys, so this is our last lesson of the day, and it's music, okay? So we're going to be using the Charanga site. Hopefully, by now, everyone's logged on. Everyone knows how to use it. I'm going to show you just really quickly what we're going to be doing today. Okay, so as you can see, when you log in, this is what you see. This is the screen. Today, what we're going to be doing is using your imagination. So on the bottom left on your screen, there's a unicorn and a rainbow. And that's the one that you're going to click on, your imagination. Okay, so we've talked a lot about um, our fiction stories and how they're made up using someone's imagination. So all our fairy tale stories that we've been looking at, okay, are from somebody's imagination. And that's what we're going to do in music today. So if you click on your imagination, this comes up, okay. And then you're going to click on launch music at home, your imagination. So once you click on that, okay, this comes up and down the right hand side, okay, you've got listen and appraise your imagination, listen and appraise supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. And it goes all the way through. A lot of fairy tales are down there. So you're gonna really enjoy this one. So if you click on listen and appraise your imagination on the first one, then your activity will load. And it's really simple. All you do is follow. So you listen um, and you talk about, um, you know, if you enjoy the music, if you'd listen to the music yourself, what instruments can you hear? What does it make you think of? So when you hit play, okay, on um, to start the music, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to listen to the music and think about your fairy tale stories and think using your imagination, what it makes you think of, okay? And then just work your way down the side of all those activities, okay? You don't have to send me anything back for music because I can see when you've logged on, how long you've been on for um, and what you've done, what activities you've done. So it shows me every time somebody logs on and what they've done while using the um, music site. Okay, so enjoy and have fun using your imagination.